Emily and I just played Galileo Galilee. This is one that we've been looking forward to. It's an Essen release. We played it on our Essen live stream recently. Go check that out. Yeah, definitely go check that out. Uh, there's a full play of that. We With played it players. again just now. Yeah, that one was three players. We just played it at two. And this is an interesting game. Quick backstory before we get to it. It's from uh, Tomas Hollick. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, first time designer, but he has three different games three coming out at very Essen. Very different games coming he out. He designed Essen. three games at the same time. I guess he just woke up one morning and said, I think I'll be a board game designer. <laughs> and then he designed these. And this one in particular, I don't know much about the other two, but this one has a lot of people talking. Yes. And we know why, because we've now played it a couple times. And it does some really, really interesting things. It does. So what we're doing in Galileo is we're actually exploring the night sky. So we're all astronomers trying to look at these different celestial bodies, um, different constellations, comets. And as we do this, we're going to be inquire, uh, getting inquisitors yes. who catch their eye at us and say, hmm, what is that you're doing, David? The Inquisition's going on, and they're not big on science. <laughs> not, yeah. I mean, so what we could do, though, is we can spend ways in the game to convince them them, yes. That we're nothing to worry about. You don't need to worry about us inquisitors. We're actually your friends. So we have this inquisition track at the bottom where we can either get their ire or we can get persuade them that yes. we're on their side. Yeah, and that translates into either negative points or positive points. And we want to focus on that a little bit, but that is not the crux of the game, but it is a very interesting part of this game. Like many Euros you've played that have those sort of like, oh, it's time to feed your people or time yeah. to do this. And there's always some penalizing or punishing sort of aspect to it. That is what this is for this game. And it does it in a way that you kind of have to wrap your head around as you play the first time for sure. Yes, because it's not like on rounds three and five, you feed your people no. on the sea. It's... Every time that you would see something that gives you an inquisitor, it's usually when you're observing a new body or a new constellation, basically doing something that's going to give you points. Yeah. Usually the better ones give you inquisitors. And then they're going to come at the bottom space of your board. This bottom space of your board, at the end of the game, anybody who's there is going to be negative eight points. Yeah. Each. Yeah. Each of them. Painful. Uh, but the only time they actually give you the points is at the end of the game, right? or during the game when they move. Yeah, and they, you don't have to move them. You don't have to move them. But there's plenty of reasons that you want to because you want to avoid those negative points at the end of the game. But when you do move them, it's going to fluctuate where you are on this track. Yes. So when you move them, you kind of want to move them in mass. Yes. Because if you don't, and you have a bunch of guys down here and some guys up here, you're basically looking at these values at the top at the end of that turn when they moved and then adjusting your position on this track. And you might go way up high if you have a bunch of guys down here at the right and maybe no one else. But if you had these and you just move this, not a good idea. You're at negative 12, negative 14. So you're going all the way down. Yeah. If you hit the bottom, you'll just get negative two. You won't get like negative 20 for no. repeatedly hitting it. So I'm here, if I go down, I'm just gonna get negative two points. I'm not risking a lot. But by the end of the game, you don't wanna be here like I was, because at the end of this game, this is also going to be another negative 10 points or up to a positive 10 points if you can balance it right and get all your people up to the top. Yeah, it's really interesting. You're going to want to spend the game trying to avoid and navigate those Inquisitors quite a bit. And why did we start with that? Well, we wanted to get the negative stuff out of the way. <laughs> and now we can talk about the rest of the thing, all the science that we're doing. And like Emily said, we're looking at the night skies and you're largely going to be collecting dice of three different colors increasing the pip values of those dice and then spending those dice on your turn when you observe the night sky with this action wheel, which is probably the last thing we'll talk about. When you do that, you're either going to look at the greater body, or is that what they call yeah. it? Um, and take the card with this right here, getting these points. And of course, you see this one gives me another Inquisitor. Another inquisitor. Um, but if I can spend, this is purple, a blue, and a red that add up to 13, I can take this card put it here in this track here, which is kind of like your library. Yes. Another interesting mechanic. This game does some really interesting things. And you're gonna score the points. The other thing you're gonna observe out here are the constellations, which are at the bottom. And you can see these are the final cards yes. that we had on our board. But sometimes the constellations might have a couple, like the one I collected mm -hmm. here. While they're out there, you can observe those constellations and score some points, maybe some bonuses. And again, some, some of those inquisitors. inquisitors and things like that. The game has a lot of things going on 
to help do all of this. Yes. It's going to help you do what I just described. It's going to help you navigate those inquisitors. Uh, a lot of that's going to come from some of the tracks you can go up, this library that you build from the cards that you collect. You're going to move books as you sort of do research across these tracks. That's when these little icons at the bottoms of each of these cards are going to kind of construct your own tracks yes. there. Again, getting bonuses and again, maybe even getting some inquisitors. But the really interesting tracks in the game are these out here yes. and they're incredibly variable. So in the institution, each one of these, the top parts, it has two sides. So all six of these are going to be used in every game and they are either going to be used as one of the tracks. So if you go up it, it'll, you'll get points for that thing times however far you are on the multiplier. So for example, for this comet one, you'll get points for each of your comets by how many of the multiplier. So I got four comets, two points each, eight points for me. However, if it had been on the other side at the top, instead, these are where you get points, seven points for being the first to do it, and three points for everybody after that. Plus, you get that one-time bonus of checking off an Inquisitor. And so that means just getting rid of one of your rightmost Inquisitors on your track. Now, that might not be a great thing if they're all over here at the far right, but if you had them all right here, or even better at all, all down here, there. and you can just dump some of those guys off the track before you start moving them up, that's fantastic. Plus, it's going to give you a quadrant and a die. Um, and the quadrants, we haven't talked about yet nope. either, but there are a lot of flexibility. So we're doing a lot of like typical Euro stuff. We're going up these tracks. We're using dice modifiers. We're like doing a collection and like completion of these. But the quadrants are what gives you flexibility for everything you're doing. Yeah, the quadrants let you do a bunch of different bonus actions during your turn. This is going to let you gain new dice, maybe pip up some of your dice, maybe even put out another comet move some Inquisitors, move your books. Uh, and those Comets we've mentioned a couple times. It's very interesting. As you put Comets out, you're going to take one off your player board and put it up here at the top. When you observe the night sky, you can use your dice with those values. You can enhance those values with whatever Comets you have out here. And if you use one of the Comets up here, say I used a four blue to observe a constellation and I needed a five, I could use this comet, flip it down here, and flip it to its two side. Now it's still a comet I can use on another turn, but it's a two value. Then once you use that, it comes down here, and again, like any good Euro, yet another <laughs> track where you can kind of place those comets out as we have done here to get some more bonuses. There's all kinds of bonuses. bonuses, and then even if you filled them all up, you can also get some more at the end, some additional points, plus there are player powers too. Yeah. And so a lot of the player powers have their own unique spaces that are also gonna be when you have your book of comets, places to put there to get special unique things. Yeah, the last thing we wanna talk about here is how this is all driven. So these are all the things you're doing. How do you do it? This is the, sort of the simple part. On your turn, you've got this cool telescope. Player boards are awesome, by the way. And you've got these pieces that are in here. We've got some of them upgraded. You can see these yellow ones. On your turn, you're going to move this one to three spaces and then do those actions. There's an outside ring that is static, yep. and that's going to be sort of the main action. And then there's these actions that are kind of movable. And you can do any of the actions in the space in any order you want. So if I was right here, I could pip up a red die or gain a die of any color. And I could either gain another die of any color or observe the night sky, and again, doing those in any order. Yeah, and that is pip up all of your red dice. Yes, that's true. So I could do in the order of I'll get a red die, and then I will pip up all my red dice. Yeah. I just can't have more than uh, three of the same color. Yeah, you can't have any more than three of the same color. Everyone starts the game with a one yellow, one blue, and one red, and then there's a fourth space. You can have up to four die, you can just never have more than three of one color. And then once you've done both those actions, at the end of your turn, you'll again see, did I move the Inquisition? If not, uh, I'm going to move my thing all the way to the bottom either way. And so everything keeps moving and changing. So you constantly have a new arrangement yeah. of that outer action that stays stagnant and the inner action, which is something you can upgrade to over time to the better side. Yeah, the upgrade is the last action you can take. That's the only action you'll take that doesn't make things adjust at the end of your turn. But then when you're up there, your next turn is again is going to go one to three spaces Starting with this space, as you can see, there's two X's here. Mm -hmm. Those two pieces, so as you take an action and move it down, it effectively puts those actions out of commission for a couple turns. Now, 
Emily said there's player powers. My guy had an interesting player power. Every time I used this tile right here, I was able to like swap two of the tiles, then swap one of the tiles from here with this empty space over here. Because you started here. with a special tile. Because I started tile. with a special action tile that gave me a lot of quadrants and let me pip up dice a lot. Whereas yours had totally different powers. Yeah, Galileo can actually observe more than everyone else. So when he observes, he can observe a body and also a constellation. Yeah. Or usually you can do two constellations at a time. He could do three yeah. if he wants. So big turns there. Yeah, it's really interesting. And there are other characters with other powers that you can cover up some of your book spaces. So you could strategically cover up some of those inquisitors so yes. you don't get them. Yes. A lot of different things going on in this game, which is amazing given that it's from... A first-time designer who also designed two games, two other games at the same time. And the one thing I want to say too that we haven't mentioned here with how it plays, it plays fast. Oh, it's super fast. So like, if you watch that live stream, it was so much faster than we thought it was. Like looking at how much there is in this game, all these different things that are happening. Actually, your turns are very, very quick, and you're just going through this deck of cards. It it's over before you know it, and then you're like. Oh shoot, did I get all my points or not? It really is. It's over before you know it. And in a two player game, I would say if we played again right now um, without maybe using new characters so that we knew exactly sure. how to use these guys, we'd probably be done in an hour oh, like, yeah. or less. It is a very, very fast, snappy game. Um, really quick, uh, like we do in these videos, we're gonna talk a little bit about who it's for, who it's not for. If you're in the mood for a completely fresh take on a Euro, I absolutely look for this game. Yeah. Like we were talking while we were playing. I'm not sure you couldn't, you can't put this game easily in a bucket. Obviously there's action selection, but it's done in a very different way. Mm -hmm. This I think comes closest to feeling like a lot of Rondo. Suchi games, oh, yeah. uh, you know, like Woodcraft and yes. some of the other yes. games that we've seen where you're like uh, Praga Kaput, yes. uh, those sorts of things. But honestly, it, it's it's its own beast, this yes. game. There's, it does so many different things. Obviously, you're going up tracks and completing sort of effectively contracts, if you will, out here. But it does it in such a unique way that it feels completely fresh. I agree. I would say who it's not for is if you're looking for something where you can plan out very far ahead. I think you could in this game, but because of the way this works, it's a little bit difficult to think about where is this going to move so that it is here on its next turn and then where is this going to be by its next turn? I found myself doing more of the like tactical, like where what's mm -hmm. best for you right now, right? And like, yeah. while I can have overarching goals, like I went up this, uh, you know, this track, so I generally speaking want to be observing these things. I was tending to be like, what's good for me right now? Because there are so many bonuses and so many ways to combo it. I wasn't trying to move like three moves ahead at once. Yeah, and I think that extends too to continued plays of the game. You really can't think, okay, I've got my strategy down. The variability that's gonna happen out here is going to make games feel wildly different. Yes. Uh, the game we played on the live stream, I didn't play it, but the game you played had some different things going on yeah. there that if this track, and these are all pieces that are variable. So right. if one track is attached to a certain top, yes. It could make a very interesting synergistic thing that you yes. could go after. Whereas in the next game, it doesn't. You they might care. not even be on the board. They might be up here instead, and that track track might be with something else. Yes, completely changing how you might want to approach, say, the Inquisition. And Jeremy was saying too when we played that, like we played it very differently than he plays with his friends, where we basically observed the major bodies right and you do away. Our constellations. No constellations. And then you went. And to, then we went constellations, yeah. and he was like, "Man, you guys are going to this deck so fast." It's kind of a little bit like we did today, although then we shifted. I was trying to slow you down. I was like, Stop, I wanted don't to do get it. to the constellations. We had a goal to get. Up six constellations. It didn't quite happen that for me, crazy. but it was close. But that is Galileo Galilee. If you have any questions at all about it, please make them in the comments below. We'll get down there and answer whatever we can. Until next time, though, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then.